afternoon, everybody. This is Friday, January 18th, and we have ourselves a webinar with John Armstrong calling in from New Zealand, but we got Pete watching over him, too. So uh, let's see what's, what's going to come up, and um, thanks for Wolfgang coming at midnight, and here we go. It's all... You got anything you want to say, Pete, before he starts? No, I'm I'm just around in case uh, any questions come up. This is John's okay. show. Cool. Okay, so I'm gonna. Okay, so John, it's all yours. I'm gonna mute myself, and um, if you don't hear me right away, it's because I'm muted. Okay. Excellent. Hey, thank you very much for that intro, Arnold. And let me just give a bit of background as to why I'm here and. Uh, uh, what we're going through today. Um, basically, I'm a relatively new um, WinDev developer. I, I'm focusing on getting into the web and mobile space is the is the area I think has got the future. Desktop, app, desktop apps are where I've been with Clarion, but um, I really do believe that the, the web is where we've got to be. I'm um, uh, also uh, wanting to make sure that I can deliver a web experience that is something that a X desktop user will feel comfortable with and is not too kludgy and clunky in the way that it operates. So with that in mind, I've been sort of struggling to get aspects of the UI working in a way that is um, like someone that is perhaps expecting who's come from a desktop environment. And I was quite frustrated um, last week doing something really, really simple. All I wanted to do was have a browse. On that browse, I wanted to be able to um, drill down into a into another page. Imagine if you like your uh, QuickBooks, for example, you're looking at the statements, you can double click on a statement and it drills down into the invoices that make it up, you can drill down into the line items on the invoice, and um, it, it just seems something element, elementary and simple that we should be able to do very easily in web dev. Now, um, what, I, what I discovered was that uh, a wonderful technology called Ajax was getting in my way and doing all sorts of wacky things that I wasn't expecting. And um, I, I tried to find examples in the WinDev examples to give us, or WebDev examples to show us how to um, uh, get around it. There wasn't really anything that was suitable there. I put a plea out to the um, uh, to the Skype group after I'd sort of scoured the various um, uh, help help functions and just couldn't get it to work. Um, I was uh, buoyed by a comment from Fabrice, who seems to um, uh, have a handle on just about everything, and he said that um, there was a way of doing it. So firstly, let me perhaps explain what the problem is. The problem is, in essence, that back in the old days, um, when Google wasn't even heard of, when we were just dealing with a, uh, a search engine like AltaVista, if you guys remember, and soon after Al Gore took time out to invent the internet, Everything was done with basically clicks and posts back to the server. So when you were browsing a web page, you'd click on a link on that web page, the server would deliver back to you a new rendition of that web page, and so on and so, th so forth. So there was a round trip. Every time you clicked on something new um, on a page, it, it would be um, rendering a new page on the server. That was kind of fine for the old way the web used to work. But going forwards, we have things like the browsers, in web dev where we've got a rich environment where we can sort and click on lines and if we had to send a um a new page to the server every time we clicked on a new line um it, it'd be quite a heavyweight sort of an operation be very clunky and slow so the the technology in the middle that gets everything working properly is called ajax ajax um is sending small packets of messages back and forth between the browser and the remote server and that's what's keeping um, the records in sync. What I found, though, it was virtually impossible to do something simple like um, uh, drill down on a page from a uh, from from a browse. And perhaps to give you a quick example as to um, uh, how how it was difficult. If we if if I had a um, uh, a simple page here, we've got something browsing um, customer orders, and um, I wanted to view the product on a on a row. Let's just quickly run that in test mode, and um, we'll try and view the product that's in behind the lines on this order here. So we just 
firing it up here we've got the Heinz tomato sauce now um, that is product ID 1908 if I click on um, view product I can execute a procedure it'll go away and view that product um, let's just have a quick look under that button to see what it's doing because I want to be able to double click on that line and drill down into it as opposed to having or, or even just click on that line and drill down and see that same information about the Heinz tomato um, brick there. So, so let's um, just see what's behind that button and see if we can put that button on the page here to watch it happening on the page. So um, back into web dev example here, look behind the button and we see our code is executing a page display of another page called product details and it is passing as a parameter the unique ID of the um, uh, of the product line. So we'll just grab that bit of code there and we'll paste it under the the obvious place to put it would be to under the click of the button. Um, when we click the button, we'd like to draw down into that page. So we find, we look through um, the various embed points and look to see whereabouts we click the button. Here we go. Clicking the button, we want to draw down into that page in the test and paste that code in. Um, everything sort of looks fine from here. We go to we go to run it and um, it comes back with an error. A strange error which um, the syntax is right. We knew it worked under the button but it darn well won't work here um, on the page. And the problem here is simply that um, we are executing this bit of code on the browser. It's in the green section. The orange sections are, are executing code on the server. The browser is executing the code here and in essence it won't allow us to do a page display which is rather frustrating but um, uh, we need to work a way around it to make it work so I can't double click on my browse and open up the um, uh, the detail for that product so that um, that seems to be getting me nowhere um, having posted a message on the Skype group um, I was very fortunate having had a frustrating many hours trying to figure out how to make it work that um, Pete came back followed through a bit of um, uh, a clue which we'd received from Frobis that what we need to do is involve a timer in the process we need to run a timer process on the browser that timer process needs to do the clicking of that button that we did manually so um, in other words we need to somehow pass from the line we're highlighting here um, the uh, the, the ID of the product and have it click the button for us. Now, um, it's, it seems a slightly convoluted way of doing things, but, it's, but it, it's really in the end quite powerful. So we'll just have a quick look again at the, um, uh, at the page running and just to review how it's, how it's working. So it's the previous version. So the objective here is to pass that parameter there, the product ID, to this button when we click on a link on this page. So I'm going to turn the product ID into a link. We'll watch as we do that. And then we want that to click this button and execute um, uh, the instruction to open a new page to view the product. Just like if we clicked on here, we can see the Acacia Honey. There's a the product information for it there. So let's, um, uh, there are a few other controls on the page which I'll just go through in a minute, but um, they'll, be, they'll be helpful for us in what we're about to do next. So our first step is I'd like to turn the product column into a link. So back to, um, back to web dev here. Now, in order to do that, we need to uh, change the attributes of the product column. Uh, as, as a bit of an aside, when I was first learning to use BrowseBox, I found it awfully frustrating. I couldn't, um, it often wouldn't click on the appropriate thing I was wanting to highlight. And um, it took me a while to discover that this light blue frame here, when you click a second time, means that we're going to be looking at the products, uh, the properties of the product column. Click on it again, and it's now highlighting the entire uh, table. We're now looking at the attributes of the table. And I guess for a newbie, that was a bit of a, confusing thing for me but um, we got there in the end so what we're going to do is try to turn the product column into a link so we'll go into the description of the product column and we've got the various attributes here this is this is this column here 
um, or I'll, I'll just quickly um, so back, uh, go back one step and describe what we're viewing here. Here is the, here is the um, customer's name, the product name, the quantity ordered, the, um, the total of the invoice, here's the product key. These are hidden columns out to the right here, which we're going to use later on. It's got the order ID um, is uh, basically hidden. We do that simply by making it visible or invisible. Um, we've got a, um, a feed for the, for the line number and also the customer ID. Those, these we're going to be use, using just later on in the demo. Back to where we were, we're looking at the product name. We want to turn the product name into a link that we can view uh, by clicking on it. So if we go into the details tab here, there's a nice option here which is link the column. Um, linking the column uh, will have the following effect on it. We'll just quickly duck out and see the effect that that has. It'll, it'll show it as a, as a clickable link. Oops, sorry, let's stop the old test and it might go a bit better. So our page has evolved from here where we've got individual line items. Sorry, that's some um, now out of date. And this page here, the new one, where we're able to um, click on links on those line items. Um, now, in theory, we should be able to just put a, um, a bit of code under the link here and say, um, view the product. Now, let's have a look at um, that in just a little bit more detail. But it's not quite as straightforward as it, as it first appears. In essence, we're, we're starting to just to run into the problem of having a server which can see um, one set of information and a browser that can see a totally different set of information. So um, just recapping the view product button, that works nicely. We want to be able to link on this link here and also open up the um, uh, that, that particular item. Now, in fact, I've given you a clue as to how we're going to be doing it by when I clicked on that link, what I'm actually doing on the, on the browser is passing the ID to a field which I created on the browser. These, that field would normally be, be hidden, but the, the um, actions I've got under the link at this point are simply to pass the product ID to this uh, control that's on the browser screen. And so we're sort of at the first step of making the system drill down into this product by clicking on a link and, and having it pass the ID of the product into that field there. So let's just go back and see how we did that and how that how that works. So um, here I've created a uh, an edit control and the the edit control uh, is a is a numeric control which is which is just storing in it um, the product ID that's passed from the browse when we click on it. Um, one uh, when we, in order to pass the um, the value from the the linked field to that edit control, what we need to do is to go into the code of the, sorry, um, the 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 link won't directly, sorry, pass that that value to that edit control. In essence. This column here, the link can only do one thing. It can press a button. It can press this button here, which says assign the product ID. We'll just have a quick look under that code there. And we see that when you click the, um, that button there, it sends the current um, uh, uh, value of the column product ID to the field I created. So just quickly looking at that in our running example in the background for a second. Um, if I highlight this row here, the apple donuts, click that button there, it's sending the value of the control to the, uh, so the value of the product ID to that field. So in essence, in order to make this work, we've ended up having to have a two or three step um, uh, process to do it. And uh, I should. I, I need to mention that basically none of this I could have figured out myself without Pete's um, excellent uh, tutorial, which he put together on his site, where he steps through it. We'll we'll come back to that in a minute. But basically, um, here on the next stage, 
there is a, um, uh, a tutorial which discusses what I'm describing here. It, it discusses the way that in order to um, view this row here, we need to basically execute the actions that are underneath this button to, to, um, to view the product. The catch-22 situation is that um, in order to view the product, we need to pass it the product ID. In order to pass it the product ID, the only mechanism we have is to use this link to press this button. And under this button, all it's simply doing is assigning the product ID 2433 of the current row that's being assigned. So we're, we're very close to having this little um, three-step process working. Um, we can view a product, we can type in, or I can put 2285, and, and it um, will grab the product ID and view um, the product ID for, oops, no, it's not quite set up totally correctly yet, but it'll, it'll send the, um, the product ID, um, it'll view the product ID under that button. In fact, I'll just fix that little bit of code there. So we want to actually read the product ID from that field there um, when, when we click that view product. So back to, the, back to the source code, under the view product, rather than reading the, the column product ID, what we're going to do going forward is change it so we're going to instead display the page based on what we read out of that column called product ID. So going forward, this button here, it will no longer read the value directly from here. It's going to read the value from the product ID column whenever it's pressed. So we're going to assign the value out of here into that column there. And then once it's assigned, we'll then be able to view it. So just quickly, we'll, um, we'll generate this version. And away we go. So now when we highlight a row, um, we want to be able to put in one or, or we'll, we'll try and view these mushrooms on the first line here, that's 2433 is their ID, 2433, and when we do that, view the product, and it's viewing 2433, the first row, as opposed to viewing the row we're highlighting. So this button here, rather than reading the row that is being highlighted, this button here is now reading the value that's in that product ID field. Next, we need to somehow get it so that we, when we click on this link here, it's, or, or this link here is assigning that product ID value. The final step is to somehow get the um, uh, the server to press that button. This is all happening, sorry, not the server, the browser. The browser needs to press that button there somehow when we, when we click on a new line. So we've got the correct value now in our product ID, but it's got to do that final step, which is to press the button like I just clicked it there. So in order to do that, this is where the timer comes in. What we're going to do is um, a bit of tricky tricking this where we, we, we create a timer on the page itself. And the timer is constantly looking to see, can I see a value of the product ID in this field here? If it can, it will press that button. It will basically execute a click of that button. If it's zero, it just goes back to sleep and goes around and does its um, work again. So uh, at the final piece of the puzzle, if you like, is to take the, um, uh, we're moving a, a value into this product ID field. We now need a timer to see, ah, the value has changed from zero to 13513. I'm gonna grab that value, click a button, and open a page just like that, and view the product information for product 13513. So, in order to do that, it's actually relatively straightforward. Let's go back to our code again, and we'll look at the the page of the code, the, sorry, the code of the, the entire page. To do that, we'll just right click in the um, background of the page, go to the code of the page, and indeed, I've already got myself um, a, a timer command which works um, just fine. Here it is here. Basically, what this is saying is that in the code, we're going to start up a timer 
the, the first parameter is what is the name of the procedure that is going to uh, be executed and the that's the first parameter the second parameter is how often should it run I've got a value of 50 in there which is um, 50 milliseconds or half a second so every half second it's going to run later on I'll, I'll ask a a question of Pete. I noticed that Pete set his to a value of one, and I just wonder if that's going to have a effect on the um, on the client's browser because it's trying to do something every one one hundredth of a second. So um, just save it um, uh, as a thought for later on, Pete. I'm just curious as to whether a half a second is um, going to be less strain on the browser. But going back to it, what we're doing is we're saying we're going to run a timer, and it's going to run a uh, the timer every um, half a second is going to run this procedure called open links. If I just click on the um, F2 button, it comes down to what open links is going to do. And in essence, open links is, is, is checking all the time to see if our product ID is greater than zero. If it is, then it's going to execute the process, sorry, it's going to click the button. Um, that's the action that's going to happen. It's going to click the button, view product. It, it will then set the um, the value of um, uh, pro the, the product ID that's passing back to zero, which will just stop it from clicking it a second time. So, and hey, John, let's see, that's a procedure there. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted to comment the the one uh, hundredth of a second on mine. Uh, if you notice in the final version I posted of my article. I actually am not starting that timer in the on load anymore. I'm starting that timer in that first button in the row select click. So that timer actually only runs once. It's not constantly running anymore. Ah, awesome. That, right. So that's 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 actually really clever. So so what you're telling me is that. Um, the timer is uh, is is not even running until you need to launch it, so it won't have any exactly. resource until it's clicked. Right, because with, even right. with the half second, it was possible sometimes you you notice a little pause between your click and the form popping up. So that's the reason I adjusted yes. it to to do it the other way. Ah, uh, cool. So 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 rather than putting it in the page code, you've got it. Um, whereabouts have have you moved it to again? Um, Hey. In so, the so code the for the uh, row, uh, the row click, uh, it, it, the so article spells it out. Uh, yeah, the, y okay, you're yeah. you're running off of the yeah. original code yeah. I gave you before I finished the article. Sure. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And um, uh, so, do you want yep. Pete? Do you want him to like pick it out of there? And take it out of there and put it in the no, right spot. I mean, it, it, it's no, it's it, it's it's all pretty much the exact same code. It's just uh, moving a couple yes. of things around. So, if he cuts so it yeah, out. I don't want to get him. I don't want to get him off of his presentation. I mean, it's 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 all going to have the same effect. I just wanted to mention that so folks can go look at it later and play with it further. Cool. We might fix that um, uh, just when I get to the end of this step here, which is yeah, really, yeah, we can do that. Um, but yeah, let's everything. let's let you move on. Let's not get you cool. derailed. Okay. So so um, leaving it there, I'm I'm running rather inefficiently. It turns out the timer all the time, every half second, when you when you load the entire page, and that timer is watching. Can I see a value in this? Um, field here. If I can, press the button. Can I see a value? Press the button. Da, 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 da. So if we just quickly run the page now, um, we'll see that uh, if I put a value, manually type a value into this column here, if I'm quick enough, I, if I can do it within half a second, I should be able to type in 1980 and get that um, uh, uh, Heinz tomato brick to come up. So one nine eight too slow. So it's brought up product number nineteen. Um, so that's kind of proving that the timer is working. Let's try a different way. If we grab that, put it in the buffer. I need to remove that comma out of it. Um, paste. Get rid of that. And copy that. Paste it in here. As soon as I paste it, 
um, it ought to immediately pick up our Heinz tomato. So three, two, one, control V, bang. We now have the um, uh, that coming up. So what we've what we've shown so far is that originally we started off viewing a product by basically the old school way of grabbing the product ID, sorry, grabbing the columns um, value of the product ID. That's not visible on the server, so we had to use this field here as an intermediate container to hold the value of that line. So now when we click on a row, we notice how that pushes the value of the product ID into this field here, and that should view the product. Let's have a look at Apple Donuts. That should put a value of 13513 in there, and bang, it did, and here we have our, our Apple Donuts. So that's that's kind of done what we, um, you know, exactly what we want. And the secret was to have that timer running in the background. All of these um, columns here, of course, sorry, these these controls here, the the two buttons and the field in the middle, we would um, make them hidden, which is simple enough. Just turn on the um, and, uh, turn off the visible property, as Pete shows in his article there, and um, that way it it would be a seamless click through. Now. Uh, this seems like a lot of hoops to jump through just to just to open a page. You might you know want to know why. A classic example of why it might be useful to have many linked um, uh, hyperlinks on a browser like this would be perhaps this this example here. I've got another um, uh, product here, uh, sorry, version here, which is slightly different. What I what I'm doing in this screen here, it's the same as what we saw before, but instead. I've added the ability to click on the customer name so you can look up the customer details as well. So, oops, it easy. So, um, if we if we go back to the screen here, same deal with the hidden fields, but in this case here, I'm, I've got a second hidden field, which is a customer ID, and I've got a view customer button rather than a view product button. Um, if we uh, look in the... Um, the procedures. Now the procedure to open the links, it looks to see if the product ID is greater than zero, it'll then click the product button. If it sees that the customer ID is greater than zero, it'll click the, the customer button. And just to quickly view sort of what that looks like, uh, it'll be as you're sort of expecting. And bang, you've now got a hyperlink so you can look up the customer information or you can look up the um, uh, uh, or you can look up the product information off the one browse. So we've got this drill down, starting to get a bit like that QuickBooks effect that I'm after, where we can um, have lots of uh, functionality off a simple browse. And um, uh, yeah, there is actually one other thing I've, I've um, learned since from a New Zealand develop, developer, Marcel, who gave me a really good way of actually um, doing the drill down without having to do this um, this linking effect. This linking effect is great, so you can have many different pages coming off one, but Marcel showed me a nice little trick which allows you to do this drill down effect without actually having to use these links. So we'll just quickly have a look at um, uh, what Marcel showed us. Um, what I've got is another uh, table which I've called order summary. The order summary has got the various orders in it. This is the order number five, the one we've been looking at. And I've got a button on this page. When you press button number five, sorry, that button there, it will display the page with the um, uh, the page we were just viewing with the order, order ID in it. And in fact, we'll just quickly go into that just to show you what I mean. It's easiest to see it rather than um, rather than uh, talking about it. So as we highlight a row, if I click this button, I can draw down into this order here. Bang, I'm now viewing that order we're looking at. I can um, click on the Acacia Honey. We're viewing this page here, go back to the order, um, go back to the previous page, et cetera, et cetera. You can look in the other order, and that's pretty nice. We're able to um, uh, go ahead and work off that. However, again, it'd be nice if we could just double click on those rows to make it work. So let me show you the little trick that Marcel showed me. Um, back to our order summary page here, this one here. Um, in essence, what he said is, why don't you just put a double click on it, which uh, <laughs> sounded like a great idea. So um, 
what he showed me was down here, or, or, or sorry, normally, uh, do you want to continue? Yes. Normally, you don't see the action when you look at the code for a row. I, I jumped in there rather quickly. What I'm doing is I'm going right click, view the code of the, of the table. Normally, you don't see an action for double click. However, your friends down here, this is where you've got the ability to do um, various things. Here, you can put a, an event when you click the mouse down button. Here, you can add uh, a section of code for what happens when you double click on a row. So if I click here, it opens up a new section for, um, oops, it is, uh, that's the wrong one, I think it's this one here, double click. What to do on the browser when someone double clicks it. And in essence, um, it's as simple as um, uh, issuing the page display. I don't know the magic behind it, for, but for some reason in this context here, the page display um, uh, seems to work without needing to do, or I can read the column value of my column and it seems to work. So um, let's just run that bit of code. What we're saying is we should be able to double click on that row and open up the order as opposed to having to press that button. So um, uh, actually, no, I've gone and um, led you slightly astray there. It was, um, uh, it wasn't that it was the execute. Sorry, execute process. Control name is going to be my, um, the button I put on the page. And the, and we wanted to click that button. My apologies there. So um, when you double click that, that row, it will execute a process, in this case here, a very badly named no name button, which is this guy here. When I double click, I'm going to press that. So let's just see if um, that works for us. Okay, so double click on that row there and bang, we're in there. So there you can see we're able to um, double click on something and it will uh, do the same thing we're doing with these um, uh, links here. I guess the advantage of the link is that you can have many different actions happening on the on the table. You can drill down into all sorts of things. And in fact, um, uh, it, it kind of just adds a whole bunch more functionality. I, I needed this sort of functionality for an application which I'm working on at present or we, we're rolling out at the moment. Um, it's for a large health provider here in um, New Zealand. This is the this is the um, interface for it. I can show you um, at an interface level. Unfortunately, it's got um, patient information within it, so we can't drill down too far. But basically, this is the the front page for a um, a page that manages healthcare services in New Zealand, um, uh, and it's it's coordinating the the the, the costs. That are being submitted from um, dozens of healthcare providers around the country for reimbursement. Um, it's, as you can see, it's got a Windows Metro look, and uh, all kudos to uh, Victoria and her wonderful webinar where she showed us how to make a make a nice interface like this. Throughout the application, it is a whole bunch of browsers where you're drilling down into um, claim forms, you're drilling upwards into batches that are being submitted. Your um, clicking throughout browsers to make it work. And the ability to have links means that I can write a much simpler interface where um, uh, you can quickly jump from, from one area to another. Um, this is uh, this screen's all thanks to, to Victoria, the way it works. We'll uh, I've got to log back into it one moment. Um, no, it's actually not. Um, hang on a second, we'll just get that to compile in the background while we're open a second version. Uh, I'll, I'll just give you a quick flavour as the sort of things that are that are in there rather than um, too much detail. It'll give you an idea sort of of, of the user interface. One thing I find is that, um, hang on a second.
Right. Um, this is the interface that's presented to the users, and it um, relies heavily sort of on the metro look with the icons, which when you hover over them, they, they um, uh, grey out like that. And it's quite a nice um, uh, way of presenting to a user an application that kind of looks like a, um, a desktop application. Uh, within it, like I said, there are, there are lots of browsers for the various claims and um, activities that are going on, and it, and it really does make life a lot easier um, to uh, to work rather than having to create a whole of individual screens. I can have drill downs from a customer or, or sorry, a patient uh, to, to open up the history for that patient. Within the history for that patient, I can open up the, um, I can list the various claims. We can drill down into those claims and see what sort of activity um, has gone on against them. So um, the ability to use the, the drill down like in QuickBooks really does make my life a bit easier. Now, um, I've got a, 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 a two other things that um, I wanted to run through quickly today within the web discoveries, things that I've found out. Um, but perhaps before moving on to that, we should go back and just quickly um, uh, talk about the um, the process here, making hyperlinks and how that's working within Ajax to see if there are any questions relating to it. Once we've done that, perhaps I might give you a, um, a 30 or, or, or a one minute uh, overview of a, of a discovery, I ma discovery I made to, to get icons um, really easily into um, WinDev or WebDev and also uh, just one other small tip. So um, getting back to what we were um, demoing with the uh, hyperlinks coming off Ajax tables, any any questions or comments? Or, or um, I'll perhaps prefix that by saying I've kind of rushed through it because I'm uh, wanted to more give an overview rather than the detail. Pete has done a uh, superb job of doing <laughs> a well-documented step-by-step as to how to do this, and really um, I'm the enthusiastic beneficiary of his work and really just wanted to show off um, uh, what he's enabled me to do. So um, on that, any questions about what we've done, how we're doing it, why we're doing it that way? Um, did you see Alan's question? He says, no, uh, okay, he said, he's, he's asking, how are you determining which column is being clicked on? Okay. Um, literally, it's, um, yeah, that, that is a, a good question, and it needs a, um, uh, a little bit of explanation by looking in the code here. In essence, when I, when I click on the product column, first up, um, you see it's highlighting the entire table. Second click, I'm now highlighting the column here. That means whatever we're doing, we're looking at the properties of the column when I right click on this column. I go into the description of the column and we want this column to do something specific. So within this, the description, because we've turned on that linking action, one really important thing I'd forgotten to show you was the linking action, then what is the action it's going to carry out? Now, if I turn this off, you see that grays out this area down here. I turn that on and you can say, what is it you would like that to do? If I drop down this list here, I can um, make it so it, it, it does various things. It can select around the table, or I can say, click the product ID button. And so that's basically how we do it. If we go back to that example I had where we've got, um, here we've got view product and view customer, click here on the, uh, to get the attributes of the customer column, go into the description of it, and you'll see that um, it will, uh, it will be saying, click the set um, customer ID button, um, and uh, hang on a second, back here, the the one for the product is um, clicking the assign the product ID. The one for the customer is going to set the customer ID. So, so literally, once you turn on this link, you can then tell it which button to press. The, your, your only options really, um, uh, sorry, your, your, your main options having made something a linkable column is to tell it to carry out an action on a button. Does that explain your, your um, question for you, Ellen? Uh, he said yes, thank you. 
Excellent. Um, Pete, is there anything you'd like to uh, correct, <laughs> add in, and uh, uh, no, uh, for for your your having multiple drill downs off of one brass, you're you're absolutely right. The the links is pretty much the only way you could do that. Uh, the whole way that I changed it in the article, I used the row selection uh, event instead of the the link event. Uh, the double click would work the same way. So your other one where you're doing the double click, the way I'm showing it in the article where I actually start the timer and end the timer from within the buttons would work very well with that that double click method. Mm-hmm. So, so, um, so the links take you to the detail of the product and the and the customer, but a double click takes you into can take you into the details itself, right? The record itself. Basically, we could have um, used a double click on this page as well. Uh, it's really nothing to do with whether it was a link or a double click. You can put the target under a double click as exactly the same thing as the target under a link. In fact, um, in theory, I could modify this table here to be really confusing, or, or it shouldn't be too confusing. We could put a double click on the on the general table so that it opened up the, um, uh, so, so that it, it viewed the customer as well. So, um, or, or, the, or the product, so. Well, I would expect it wouldn't, uh, um, John? I, I would have expected it not to go to the product or to the name, but to the actual transaction record on a double oh, click. Okay, sure, um, excellent. You're talking from a yes, from a from a intuitive user interface point of view. You're quite correct um, that that you want to do what is natural, what the user is expecting to see. I guess my answer was really just to say, as a programmer, you can send the user in whatever direction you like. Um, in fact, on yeah, you can write as the, bad of an interface um, as you we, want. Yeah, on the um, on this program here, um, one of the changes I want to make is to have it so that it doesn't actually drill down when you double click on anything. It actually um, uh, opens up these are these these are various claim files in there. It'll actually open up the um, uh, the claim file so we can download the CSV file. And um, one thing I was working on. Is I'm going to change that line there to look like a link, so that um, and and it will have a link on it, so that you can open up the or you know you can save that claim and submit it for um, uh, for processing. Um, and that's uh, an example of where your your link might do something totally different from opening a page. It could be processing a claim or doing something quite different. So um, yeah, nice. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Give us your other hints, man. Okay. Hey, um, in in that uh, applications I I, I made, one of the really important things I reckon is that um, if your application looks good, (laughs) that may be average, your your user will think it's great. If your application is beautifully crafted from a programming perspective and it doesn't look so flash, then your your user won't rate it that highly. It's 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 unfair, but um, that's how it works. So the, um, we are competing against the best design minds of Apple, which is in, um, always increasing the um, expectation of the consumer. So the product you're delivering needs to not only work correctly, it needs to work well. And I was inspired by the um, presentation that Victoria gave us of using a metro style interface um, uh, for the application and um, the way that we could have these buttons here where they do all sorts of things and I needed to find where can I get buttons of the right size to go back or to do these things here and um, my wife actually found this nice program here called Metro Studio and I'd, I'd urge um, you you might like to look at this I don't want to sort of run an ad for something totally different, but this is free. This product here, um, they give away free. You need an icon for something, you'll find it in here. Um, I don't know, you start typing what do you yeah, want to do. Yeah, it's really you know, nice. Lots of stuff. Yeah. And you can you can just find an icon. That that user logon icon, for example, 
I use that um, back here. Oh, sorry, they, they're a slightly different one, but um, you can see the effect how it's sort of uh, you you get the hover over effect. And I um, uh, or if you like, I can give you a quick demo as to how to make a nice looking icon like in here. Put it into your WinDev or WebDev application um, with the with the fading out um, look and all the rest of it in a couple of seconds with this um, uh, free product called Metro Studio from Sync Fusion. So, um, do you want me to uh, run and how that uh, might might be done? Sure, yeah. that'd be great. So, so we want to put a put a button on here to to do something. It might be to send a fax or whatever. So, um, grab grab your button control. And put your button on. Now, um, let's say we wanted to send send a fax. For example, I go into Sync Fusion and look up. Actually, fax is not a good idea, is it? That's all. That's all gone. We'll look up something in the mail arena. So, searching for mail, and there's a whole bunch of mail you can uh, mail options for sending, for adding, or or whatever. Um, let's grab this guy here. Send mail. So, in order to put that icon into your application, you do this. You click on the edit button and it brings up um, the icon in different sizes. Now, one thing I find with icons, you never find the icon in the correct size for what you want. Whereas here, you just call it up, you make a big one for the top right hand corner of your splash page, you make a little teeny one for your um, uh, in line with your browse. I'm going to make a 48 by 48 to go on a button. and. It's as, it's as simple as I can just export that right now and I'll have a 48 by 48 button. I want to make though a button which is going to be um, uh, have that effect where it sort of fades out. So what I do is this. I pick my button. I can choose to put a square box around it or a, um, uh, or, or a transparent background, whatever. I'm going to put mine within a circle. And it says, what background color would you like? Um, I'm going to grab, now I'm, I'm using the, the eyedropper tool. I'll grab that color there which is, I'm clicking over here, which is that red there, and I'll grab the same red there for my, um, it's rather a dark combination, but I'll make it a bit lighter, I like that red there, so I can just use that eyedropper tool, grab, this is going to be a red button, um, and I'm going to export that, and I've got an images folder underneath my Hawaii directory, which I'm just going to put it in, it's going to save it as a PNG, but I can save it in all sorts of formats. I'll do a PNG because they're nice, they're transparent. And I generally suffix them with 48 times 48. So I know that this is the uh, mail send 4848 button. And then I want a second button to be the rollover. This should be a slightly different color. So when you roll over the button, you can tell you're rolling over it. So I grab my, um, I'll grab the color chart this time. And I want to grab a slightly different shade of red for when we roll over it. Um, maybe like that, and grab that and make it again here. So export that again, and this time I'm going to call it mail send um, 4848 um, underscore rollover. We now have um, two buttons that are available for us to be using in WebDev or WinDev, whatever. Go into your button here, that, that's going to be your mail send. Go into the description of the button and head on down to the image that this button is going to carry out. So go down to the style. I found this really confusing when I was learning it, by the way. There's the, the title of the button, but I'm going to go down and say I want to look at the image of the button, which is the thing we're dealing with at present. Currently, it's defaulting to that style there. I'm going to look up and find my folder that I created called Images. I'll grab my mail send, stick that on, and unclick this so we only see one button rather than three of them. Grab my, go back to my Images folder. Oops, a daisy. Um, up one and down into Images. And I've now got a rollover version of it, which is um, the main one and the rollover version. It's got a bit of text in the middle. I'll go into general and I'll take that out. I'll put a help note on there so it just appears as a tooltip. Um, um, send an email. And 
resize that little puppy and we've got ourselves a, a nice little button. Now, um, when, we, when we run that page, we'll get that rollover effect with it because we told it it, it it had two buttons and so you have two two separate images for the um for the one button and you've now got the rollover effect which we saw in here i used a subtle shade of gray but i guess um where i found it useful the tool it costs you nothing you'll get an icon that is always the right size because you can make them larger or smaller it supports transparency so you can see through the darn things and there are just thousands of them for you to search for so that's my tool tip number one for getting a bit of productivity out of it and making a nice looking um, application what do you reckon very nice very nice like thank it. you hmm. yeah i got that app and yeah. i never used it now i gotta go use it <laughs> um it, it, it really is good. It's nice of them to provide a um, uh, a free application for us. It's a, it's a little bit difficult to, to track down. When you go to Sync Fusion site, um, they don't sort of advertise it. I'll just head there so we can find the um, uh, find the URL for you. Um, you go to downloads and you can't find it straight away, but um, it's there. Uh, it, you actually have to install something, but and and give your email address. They don't spam you. Um, or anything like that, and you look for the product called Metro Studio, and here it is here, um, you get it for free, uh, and it's just full, crammed full of icons, which you can, like this little thing here, all of these icons are in there, and you can use them to um, to make some lovely looking applications. So um, so there you go, there's tip number one of the day, something, something I've learned, it's nice that um, I'm no expert like the other gurus around the place, but uh, you know I've sort of found something which I think could be of use to people. So, um, so that's the first tip. Um, the other tip is that um, uh, I, I I worry terribly about um, damaging or losing my dongle. Now, to to avoid doing that, I've found a really simple way of rather than having to plug my dongle into my laptop or desktop and move it around the house and all the rest of it. I've got a little product that allows me to plug my dongle into this um, product and it then is shared with me over the network. So back to um, back to here, this is a product here. Uh, it's 49 US dollars I see on eBay. It comes from TP-Link and what you've got is a, um, is an, it, it's a, it's a print sharer for, um, for printers normally. It plugs into, in, into your network and it's got a USB slot in the side of it. It doesn't have a photo of the USB slot. But anyway, um, uh, when you when you plug this into the network, you plug your, plug your USB... Oh, here it is here, sorry. Uh, no, that's not going to show it. Um, uh, it plugs into your wired network. It's got a USB slot in it, which is used for sharing um, printers or cameras or whatever. It just happens to work beautifully with the Windy of dongles as well. Now, um, I, I then have down the bottom bottom corner of my screen this uh, little um, screen here which shows me I'm currently connected to the dongle for WebDev. My WinDev dongle, which is dongle number two there, is currently occupied on my wife's machine and um, I can't actually connect to it. So the, so the program respects all of the licensing of um, PC soft. It's not like it's sort of sharing something uh, that you haven't bought. You must have a dongle, must have purchased a dongle for each one you're using. And this is my, this is dongle number four, which is on my little four, four port um, sharing hub. And that, uh, I can uh, grab that dongle, double click on it, and it's now loading that up, and it's now connected to my PC. I can now launch quite happily into um, uh, Windows Mobile, and it will, um, be there. I disconnect the device and it's now available on other machines. We'll come back in a second. This one here, it's um, being run on my wife's machine. I can request that she, um, uh, this will ask her to disconnect it and it'll pop up a message on her machine if I wanted to. But it means really that the, the dongles stay safe and sound um, on the network, never need to be plugged and unplugged. And uh, it's just a really nice little solution that means that they're safe. They're not going to get stolen, they're not going to get broken. Yeah. So you have a hub plugged into that device? 
Yeah, that, um, that's got an Ethernet cable which just goes into the hub and it's got, on. Um, you, you can't see it, but on the other side there, it's got a USB hub, a four port USB. Okay, so there are four which, um, USB uh, ports on it, okay. Well, the, the device indeed only has a single one, um, but you can get a, a, a you can get USB four port hubs for twenty bucks or fifteen dollars kind of thing. Okay, so you you are plugging a USB hub into it to so that you've got all your dongles Correct. Yes. plugged into it. Gotcha. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, and it, it it kind of just keeps them safe from um, getting damaged or stolen and. Uh, it's convenient if you're on the desktop or the laptop, you can just quickly flick over from one to the other and away you go. Hmm. So, that is uh, very cool. So those very are, cool. Do you like that? Hmm. Indeed, um, just to get a little bit more complicated, I went uh, last week or two weeks ago on vacation to... Um, the family's lake holiday home, which doesn't have a network at it, and it doesn't even have internet, but I use one of these products from um, TP-Link, the same company, and um, what this allows you to do, you stick your wireless um, thumb, one of these things here, a, um, uh, a 3G connection into it. If we look at it from a different angle, um, you see it's got the 3G goes in there, a little wee short network cable, all of um, six, six inches long, that connected into this device here. This shared the internet amongst the computers at the lake house, and this shared my dongles amongst <laughs> the computer there. We really shouldn't have been working while we were away, but hey, it was nice and convenient to um, uh, have, if you like, a portable network. This device here is really best. It's a it's a wireless access point, effectively, that um, you can either share a, uh, a USB 3G plug out of or if you're in a hotel that's only got a wired connection and you're running an iPad or something like that which can't connect through to the Ethernet it will it will make your own little hotspot for you so uh, you yeah, know there's a couple of little tips non wind dev but kind of wind dev hmm what else can we help you guys with today <laughs> to thank you for all the contributions we've had Nice, very nice. Um, Wolfgang mentioned a USB redirector too. I wonder if he wants that's to say a, something about that or. Well, that's a great uh, little Wolfgang? product. Wolfgang. <laughs> yeah, can you talk yeah. about that a little bit? Um, may, may, maybe, yeah, I, um, John, could you go to this? Uh, can you click on the go switch over to your other screen and click on that link that he's showing? Just go. To, oh, yeah. Or, Grab off Skype. Sorry, I've been. Um, uh, oh, sorry. I, I, I went to the Skype screen. Wrong one. You're talking about. Yeah, in the middle there. Yeah, go to the. Go to his uh, chat area up a little bit. No, the, the one on the bottom. The one on the bottom. No, the chat area. Yeah, go up a little bit. Yeah, go up a little bit. Ah, right. I see what I Yep, right there. Just click on that link. Yeah. Okay, this one is uh, not a hardware solution, it's more of a software solution, which I found quite nice. Um, what I've done is I've got a, a file server here which we use um, as a version control of the WinDev and also um, we use it for our SQL database keeping the business going. Um, so what I've done is I, I hated the idea of always running around with these plugs and I'm worried about getting it damaged or getting lost worst case scenario. <clears throat> so what I've done is uh, we found this little product and what's nice about it, you, you load it onto this the server and I've taken one of those little fly leads, uh, splitter USB thing, put all three of uh, Windows dongles on it, the mobile and the uh, web dev and the uh, wind dev, plug it all in and run this little product and it allows you then to connect all that up. So as you can see it costs what three USB devices, $109, you put it on, and then you download the client side, and the client side costs nothing, it, 
and you can load it to as many machines you want. So I've got it on my laptop and my three different other workstations. Uh, so it doesn't matter which machine I'm at, um, I just uh, run the USB re redirector, tick on the little box which says I want uh, to work on uh, web dev, and there you go. And the nice thing about this is um, I've got a guy who programs with me, but he hasn't got uh, web dev. So, but he's in another continent. He's in actually in South Africa. I'm in the UK. Uh, but the nice thing about it is it's like passing the dongle over to him uh, uh, right across the continent without actually leaving my server. And then the guy can work. And then, uh, unfortunately, while he's in, you can't go in. Um, so sometimes I kind of put in the Skype chat and say, uh, Barry, please get out. I want to work on WinDev now, <laughs> kind of thing, um, or vice versa. Uh, so, but but at least uh, um, between the two of us, if I'm working with WinDev, uh, he can work in WebDev and, and vice versa. So we we utilize the product better. And so, can you use a combination of these things? Can you use a combination of these things so you can kind of combination? Uh, uh, what do you mean? Uh, you put all three. You put like all three USB uh, dongles of uh, WinDev in. On the no, server. what I mean is use 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 um, what, what he just showed us. Um, not only use your USB director, but use that print server thing where he he can yeah like that. Oh yes, uh, you can also plug in your printer, uh, so you can print from any machine, a laptop, whatever, by connecting to it. It's like plugging it directly into You're your. Talking, um, Arnold about it. Are you thinking about Daisy chain them somehow, Arnold? Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Well, because you, then you have the benefit of both, don't you think? Well, I, they're I both doing the same thing, thing, Arnold. It's just it. one's local network, one is one yeah. is over an extended network. Uh, Arnold, look at it this way. It's 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 like as if you got a virtual plug. It's like virtually plugging it out on whatever other machine you've got it in and plugging it into yours. So if it's a printer or a hard drive or if it's the dongle from um, PC Soft, uh, it's, it's, you plug it in and out as you need it. Huh. Nice. As a matter of fact, we've got a hard drive also on the system, which is a USB hard drive on the server. Uh, where we um, synchronize certain documents which people work on uh, the user manuals of our product. Um, so what happens is uh, the guy can, it's like plugging it out from my server and plugging it locally in the local drive. The only difference is, is going through the internet. For what it's worth, the hard resolution <laughs> I'm using. Yeah. As I was just going to say the hardware solution, the one that's um, uh, on the hard print server, that yes. is that is not routable. It's got um, internet protocols that, that basically pick it up no matter where it is on your local network. Yeah, but it's, it's just um, designed for local you know, network. So, so it's a no-brainer. Yep, it just it just works, yeah. but it, it's um, it's not routable onto the internet or anything like that. So it's locally within your network. Oh, with it's that's, a, it's a, just to mention uh, really easy. while you're saying it. Yeah, while you're saying that, I just remembered something. You you kind of need a fixed IP address uh, on the server if you're going via the internet. Otherwise, it can't find it. If your uh, internet uh, service provider changes your IP. Yeah, you could probably get around with that if you used, uh, you know, one of the, like, dynamic DNS. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, 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 you can do that. It must probably work. But uh, like what I say, uh, what I found that I use it extensively because it's so handy. Um, what happens is also uh, because of the documents is on the one uh, drive, uh, uh, USB drive. Um, we work on it, and then uh, it doesn't matter where you are, you book it out, and then you book it back in again on that drive, and anybody else uh, can get it. The only difference is. If it's locally plugged into your laptop or your hard drive, into your local PC, 
it's very fast, obviously. But if you're going through the internet and you're using only Edge or 3G, it's slightly so slower, but uh, but it still works. Okay, John. That was a nice tip and an added tip from Wolfgang. Cool. Cool. Well, you got a lot of tabs going on up there in your browser. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty. So, 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 did you have something else you wanted to share, or? Um... No, that's basically um, all I've got. Uh, at, oh, at that's great. Point. So, um, yeah, well, that's great. chipping away, and yeah, I'm pleased that there's something I can give back. It's wonderful. Appreciate it, and uh, appreciate everybody coming on this weekendish time time frame. Thank you, John. Okay, and if I could just put in, a, can I just put in a final plug for um, the contribution of everybody else on the team, especially in this instance here. I'm really repackaging what um, Pete has discovered. So uh, you know, uh, to, to get the detail in behind what I've done, go to go to Pete's blog here. But uh, it's nice to be able to um, you know, give a few different perspectives on it. I must Very say, nice. it's a fantastic blog. Well, he's just a blogger. He's just a blogger. <laughs> now I can blame him for most evenings not going to sleep early. I have nothing better to do. It's not like I have bills to pay or anything. No, my not at all. My tax care partners have uh, have formally filed a missing persons report for me. So this weekend you probably hey. won't hear much from me. <laughs> Do you, do you want to talk about those uh, three uh, open source um, things that you posted recently? Well, it's actually quite a bit uh, more than that. All the all of my classes are are now up there. Uh, the best way to get it is to grab the uh, the uh, Next Age open source application one you've got up on the screen now. You pull that down, that's a complete project directory that has all the classes. The PDF files are in the documents directory of that project. So that it kind of has everything in it. That's the browse form manager, the default manager, QBE. Yeah, and as long as we're patting everyone's back, uh, you know, both the uh, business rule manager and the uh, QBE were significantly inspired by uh, the work Glenn did with his training materials. So you know, this is all you know. This is this is how the community works. You know, we all contribute something, and then somebody extends it and shares that, and then somebody extends that, and just keeps the building. Yeah, oh. Glenn stuff is also good. That's for sure. That's all I can say. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Okay, so uh, let's let's call it a wrap. Ooh, may, maybe I gotta get Andy's on the mic so he can say his his words. What's the words? Be good or be good at it. How's that? Did I sound good? Be good yeah, that was good impressive. I thought it was Andy for a moment. <laughs> Okay, guys, thanks so much, and we will see you next week when uh, Glenn Rathke comes on. And then the week after, we start the February 1 uh, sojourn with Uncle Pete. And the other thing uh, you need to remember is Andy Stapleton starting the, uh, what's that thing he's starting? He needs your input for the chatterbox. So go to the www. Uh, yep. the chatterbox we're going to start designing it up setting everything up of what we want to play with see which one's in version 1, version 2, version 3 so that way we can do a big lot of sharing and things like that via the chatterbox and start storing some of all this great information we're getting in our chat rooms and everywhere else exactly okay and uh, don't forget to, if you go to www. Uh, 
wxlive.com. Um, it's noted there. Uh, leave your your suggestions uh, on the Skype to uh, Andy, private yep. or otherwise. Yeah, private. Uh, okay. It, it, private would be best. That way, I won't lose it in the in the day to day shuffle. Yeah, uh, so, uh, if you're not connected to me, it's Andy underscore CCS Cowboy, and uh, you can connect to me via Skype. And uh, and what I'll end up doing is taking every one of those suggestions, and we will put them up there, uh, with the exception of some of them that Pete suggested so far. There's a few of those I just don't think that I'm willing to even think about doing. And uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, let's leave it at that. <laughs> Thanks again, John. Appreciate it. <laughs> Y'all be good to be good at it. <laughs> there you go. That's all I was waiting for. Stopping the recording now.